In 1998, Michael Jordan finished his last season with the Bulls on top, as inarguably the best player in the world, with another NBA championship to back it up. And in that season, 26 years ago, Jordan averaged 28.7 points per game on 46% shooting from the field. Now, not only was his scoring average a league high that season, his shooting efficiency was considered excellent at the time. In fact, outside of a couple big men who played five feet out from the basket, there wasn't a single player who could compete with him as a scorer. But times have changed. Because this season, there are seven players across the NBA who are averaging at least the numbers Jordan did in his final MVP season. But there are not seven players as good as Michael Jordan was in the NBA right now. Is there? Are the stats of today's NBA inflated? Not a true reflection of the skills and abilities of its players? Or have NBA players gotten too good at basketball? Today's video is sponsored by DraftKings. The weather might be cooling down, but the action on the field is heating up, and DraftKings, an official partner of the NFL, is here to get you in on the action. Right now, new customers who bet just $5 will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's right, $150 in bonus bets just for placing a $5 wager. And if you're already signed up for DraftKings like me, you can get a no-sweat bet. Just place the same game parlay or SGPX and get a bonus bet back if your parlay doesn't hit. And if sports betting is not yet available in your state, you can still join in on the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers who use promo code Jimmy Highroller and bet $5 will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code Jimmy Highroller only at DraftKings Sportsbook. In basketball, there is one main objective. Score more points than the other team. Sounds simple enough, but it's not. And generally, there are two ways you can go about this. Play stifling defense and keep your opponent's points as low as possible, or get buckets. NBA teams of today tend to lean towards option number two. And uh, they've gotten really good at it. Teams scoring 120, 130 points on a regular basis, even 140 point games, oftentimes occurring on the same night. But for many NBA fans who grew up on an NBA where point totals looked like this, they are not a big fan of all the scoring. They don't like it. There's too many points, or maybe not enough defense. Stat lines like this used to have the NBA world on fire for a day or two, but now they're literally a dime a dozen. There's players around the league who are damn near averaging these numbers. Growing up, I would often go to Portland Trailblazers games, and as much fun as it was to watch my home team play the most violent version of basketball possible without any real consequence, the real prize in my eight-year-old brain was this, a free chalupa from Taco Bell. All the Blazers had to do was score 100 points. Win or lose, 100 points, and the Chalupa was ours. It doesn't look like much, but winning one of these felt like winning the lottery. We would get so riled up over the prospect of a free Chalupa that many nights the crowd would just lose sight of the game altogether and start chanting Chalupa as the score approached 100. But tragically, after 14 seasons, the Blazers discontinued this delicious promotion in 2013. And I think it's safe to say it's never coming back. When Taco Bell first began running this promotion, the Blazers were scoring over 100 points at home about 11 times a season, or about one in every four home games. Attainable, but still rare enough to keep the thrill of it all alive. But by 2020, the Blazers scored 100 points or more in 39 out of 41 home games, enough to put every local Taco Bell out of business. Is this entire monologue really about chalupas? Kind of. But I say all of this to emphasize just how much scoring in the NBA has exploded and shows no signs of slowing down. NBA offenses in today's league are really, really good. Back in 2015, the Golden State Warriors reshaped what a potent, efficient offense looks like and led the league that season with an offensive rating of 111.6. This season, that same offense would rank 26th in the league only ahead of four atrociously bad teams. A decade ago, in 2014, the league saw a combined 24 occurrences of teams scoring at least 130 points 
in a single game. This season, there have already been 85 occurrences of teams scoring at least 130 points. And the league as a whole is on pace to have about 265 of these games by the end of the season. That's more than 10 times more than the league had back in 2014. Now, a lot of fans assume that the insane point totals we're seeing around the league today are simply a byproduct of stat inflation. The game is faster, no one cares about defense, every other shot is a three-pointer. But it's not just inflation. Inflation would assume that it's just the volume that's changing, that there are more things happening within every game and that's what's leading to the influx in numbers. But it's not that. Other than the dead ball era, right now is a pretty average time in the league in terms of pace and shots. It is the efficiency and simply how good players have gotten that has really skyrocketed. The dead ball era of the NBA, as the name not so subtly suggests, was an era of slow, physical, grinded out basketball, where games would finish with a final score that, without exaggeration, resemble a halftime score in today's NBA. If we look at the timeline of the NBA and the amount of points teams have scored on average over the last 65 seasons, it's not hard to pinpoint where the league came to a grinding halt offensively. This valley right here, from about 1997 to 2006, is a visual representation of just how slow and drawn out offenses became throughout the dead ball era. And thanks to new rules such as a shortened shot clock on offensive rebounds and innovations in offensive schemes, and of course the evolution of the three-pointer, offenses are now alive and well again. But contrary to popular belief, it wasn't just a change in the rules that favor offense that spurred this explosion in production. Players also just got better at scoring the ball, because here is the league average effective field goal percentage throughout that same time span. For decades, the league as a whole floated somewhere between 45 and 48 effective field goal percentage. And with little change in efficiency, it was the pace that more or less dictated how productive offenses would be. But over the last decade, the league has gradually become better and more efficient at scoring the ball, reaching a league-wide average effective field goal percentage of nearly 55% over the last few seasons. Now, of course, with more threes, efficiency inevitably increases almost at a linear rate. But today's players also turn the ball over less than ever before. They shoot free throws better than ever before while shooting less free throws than ever before. Across the board, players are simply better now than they were in past eras. And this becomes clear when we look at the league average offensive rating over the last 50 years. Even when we level the playing field and look at offensive production per 100 possessions, today's teams are vastly superior than their predecessors. Just 20 years ago, teams were averaging just 102 points per 100 possessions. Today, that number has jumped all the way to 115 points. Same exact pace, same number of possessions, far more points. Now, more points from more proficient offenses is not exactly what I would call a problem. In fact, I think this brand of basketball, whether you like it or not, is the highest form of the game that we've ever seen. But as we continue to see the game evolve, it is becoming more and more difficult to keep the context of what we're seeing intact. Luka Doncic is a generational talent, one of the best players in the world. And 20 years ago, Tracy McGrady was one of the best players in the world with a similar status among his peers. Except in his prime, McGrady's numbers looked like this. And over the past five seasons, Luka's numbers look like this. Is Luka really this much better than a prime Tracy McGrady was? Or has the game and its players evolved to the point where stats have almost become some arbitrary measure of a player's ability, where without context, they are almost meaningless? Now, some of you may be saying, well, this isn't a fair comparison. Tracy hit his prime in the dead ball era. Teams and players in general put up less numbers. Well, here are their stats when we adjust them to be the same exact pace and the same number of possessions. And still, it's only when we factor in the rule changes, the spacing, the schemes, the drastic change in overall league play style that we can even begin to get the full picture, which kind of defeats the simplicity of a box score altogether. 
Or what about De'Aaron Fox? Fox is a great player, but the 30 points, five rebounds, and six assists he's averaging right now on 58% true shooting is a historically great stat line. In fact, it's so great that if we exclude the last five seasons, the only guards in the history of the league to average these numbers in a season were James Harden, Michael Jordan, and Stephen Curry. Are the numbers simply deceiving us? Or is De'Aaron Fox really this special? 10 years ago in 2014, guess what LeBron James and Kevin Durant had in common? They were the only two players in the league to average at least 25 and five a game that season. 20 points, five rebounds, and five assists used to be sort of a standard for a fantastic all-around player. In today's league, there are 16 players around the league averaging at least 25 and five. How exactly do we reconcile the fact that what used to be a threshold reserved for mega offensive talent is now just another stat line? And this is happening all around the league right now. Tyrese Halliburton is averaging 26 and 12 on 66% true shooting this season, a stat line that has never been achieved in the history of the league. Are there really this many generational talents in the NBA today? Or has offense just become diluted? Well, I actually think these massive numbers are a product of both of these factors, one stemming from the other. There is so much talent and firepower in the NBA today that getting good looks and getting them quickly has actually become fairly easy. Sure, there's essentially eight more possessions a game in today's league compared to the previous era, and those extra possessions are driving numbers up a bit. But does anyone stop to consider why there are more possessions? Games have been sped up because no longer are teams running 20 second offensive sets and eating up the clock to find a good open look. This drives up the number of possessions each game and those possessions just feed the loop even further. Great offense leading to quick possessions, leading to faster games, leading to more points. Defense today isn't terrible. Players have just become too good at offense. Offense has been the driving force and the primary emphasis on the league for a decade now. And over that decade, the game has evolved and so has its players, with play styles tailor-made to wreak havoc on defenses. Over the years, great offensive players have proven that once your offensive game gets to a certain point, there's only so much a defense can do to slow it down. And instead of there being a handful of these unstoppable offensive players in the league at any given time, like we saw in previous eras, there are now dozens of players of this caliber all around the league. In the 90s, it was Jordan, Malone, Hakeem, D. Rob, not just good offensive weapons, but truly elite. In the 2000s, it was Kobe, T-Mac, Shaq, Iverson, the 2010s had LeBron, Durant, Harden, Curry. But now, in the current era of the NBA, these elite offensive weapons are everywhere. Embiid, Luka, Giannis, Shea, Durant, Fox, Curry, Booker, Mitchell, Tatum, Jokic, Trey, Halliburton, Maxi, LeBron, Dame, AD, Edwards, Kawhi, PG, LaMelo, Brunson, Kyrie, Sabonis, all of them legitimately unstoppable offensive talents from night to night. And that's just the highest tier. It doesn't even include guys like Morant, Zion, Bain, Markinen, Ingram, Cam Thomas, Randall, Jalen Brown, Kat, Sangoon, Scotty, Garland, Paulo, Siakam, Butler, Mikel Bridges. The league is more talented now than ever before. So how do you stop all that talent? You don't. You just try to keep up. Between a massive change in the way young players are being taught to play the game, to new advanced analytics that have opened the doors to the best statistical options for teams around the league, to advancements in health and training regimens that have allowed older players to be at the top of their game longer than ever before. All factors building up to what has become the most loaded pool of talent in NBA history. But how do we know when it's gone too far? Look up just how much teams are scoring these days and you'll also be met with a slew of angry fans, mourning the loss of the game they once loved. After the dead ball era, the league has taken so many steps to boost offense that maybe they've overcooked the recipe. Maybe there's too much offense in today's league. But is all of this offense artificial? A product of rules that simply push for more offense? Or have the skills and small nuances used by offensive greats in the past been optimized and perfected in players of today? 
Were defenses bad for letting Michael Jordan average 30 a game in a league where entire teams only average 90? In arguably the toughest time to score a bucket, Kobe scored 81 points on the Raptors. Was that team simply the worst defensive team of all time? Or was Kobe just that unstoppable offensively on that night? Good offense will almost always beat good defense. And right now, there's a whole lot of good offense in the NBA. And it's not a bad thing. In fact, it is a reflection of just how much better players have become and how the game has evolved. The only real downside to all of this, no more free chalupas.